This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Feeders, a sci-fi horror movie directed by brothers John and Mark Polonia, as well as John McBride, and made back in 1996. It focuses on the strange events that occur one day when an alien spacecraft drops its passengers off in a state park or some kind of forest, at least. Those passengers just so happen to have a strong desire to feast, and it isn't too long before their sights turn upon hapless human victims in their paths. Meanwhile, two friends traveling across the country find themselves mixed up in these events, and it's up to them to try and stop the invaders before they can take over the world, if that's even possible. It's probably worth noting that this is a low-budget, shot-on-video affair, and the production values show in every second. Everything is clearly cobbled together, based less upon what they needed for a scene, and more on whatever they had on hand, whether it be shooting on location in cramped houses and hallways, or in open areas during odd hours that don't have people around to interrupt shots. The story itself is actually able to hide this pretty well, keeping to a rather small cast in a small town, but it can't hide the rest of the film's lack of money, especially in its special effects work and the designs of the alien invaders. They're small, and they do at least look like aliens, but they also seem as though they were made out of styrofoam glued together and painted all in one afternoon. This may have been something that the film could have tried to hide, but the filmmakers apparently decided to shoot these aliens in close-ups to either bring attention to this or to hide whoever was puppeting them. Though puppeting makes it sound more complex than just grabbing the aliens and shaking them a bit. On the bright side, Audio is at least easy to hear, and there are a few times where the filmmakers do attempt some creative cinematography, though for the most part shots are handheld, eye-level, and bring further attention to the lack of budget. It also doesn't help that these shots tend to drag on for a while to pad out the runtime, it seems. They're likely meant to be tense, but they just end up being kind of lazy in the end. I will point out that in a few cases, some special effects are used, limited by whatever technology fits the already limited budget, but still used in appropriate measures, rather than just being thrown around to see what sticks. As for the story aspects of Feeders, there isn't much to say in its defense. The plot drags on for quite a bit, introducing characters who either do nothing get killed, or both. And early story threads end up being cut off entirely and abruptly as it comes to focus upon the two travelers. The overall story is also a bit contrived, not so much for what it does throughout the film's runtime, but how it ends. In that the scenes and ideas are kind of stretched out until the finale, where the filmmakers seem to remember that they needed to end the story with a story, and crammed in whatever they could for the final twists. Needless to say, the characters of Feeders are as undeveloped as anything else in the movie, story-wise or production-wise. On an objective level, there's little within the film that can be considered high-quality filmmaking, whether it be because of the low budget or the poor writing. Regardless, Feeders still oozes a sense of charm and honesty, a movie made by amateur filmmakers who had an idea and wanted to see it come to life, no matter what had to be sacrificed. The aliens may be cheap, the story may be weak, and the characters may serve no purpose other than to get killed off, but it all comes together with enough fun and heart that, despite its incompetencies, it's a great example of the sort of creator who will stop at nothing to make their dreams a reality. Or something like that.
Feeders, John Polonia, Mark Polonia, John McBride, 1996. Uh, one star, but I'd still recommend seeing it. It's great to watch by yourself, and it'll be better to watch it with friends. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. It's kind of nice to see something that's so bad it's good, but has enough in it to keep it interesting for an audience of one. Most others have been the kind you have to watch in a group, I feel like. I hope I get more movies like this eventually.